Over time, games will gradually increase the power level of cards, characters, weapons, and more. And I have stated in the past that power creep is a necessary evil, to which a few people have disagreed. But I still believe my statement is correct. Power creep is necessary. And power creep is evil. But power creep appears to us in more than one form. Four forms to be exact. So I present to you the four horsemen of power creep. Now the first horseman you will know very well. The horseman of might. AKA the numbers guy. Biggest number beats the smallest. Now for anyone who played Yu-Gi-Oh back when it first was released, you may recall Lejin the Mystical Genie being prominent for its low cost, high attack until it was edged out by another, then another, then another, then another. Then another. Well, you get my point. So here is a different example from Magic the Gathering. We have Suntail Hawk and Rusttail Falcon. Both cost the same amount of mana, both cost the same type of mana, and they both have the same ability, flying. But Rustwing Falcon, a card that came out several sets later, is a one power, two toughness card compared to the Suntail Hawk, which is just a one power, one toughness card. So when it comes to picking one of the two, you are going to choose the one that has the higher number. And this is an issue when dealing with small numbers. If you start off with a stat value of one and you want to increase it, the minimum you can increase it by is one, which means you have doubled the number. I mean, without going into decimals. But that isn't power creep, that is power curve. Something that I've looked into in a previous video link in the top right corner. Now the reason why Magic the Gathering increased the power is because they rotate out old cards. Now I know on the surface this doesn't quite make sense because you can just change a like for like card and introduce a new card with one mana, one power and one toughness. So why increase one of these stats? Because the old formula doesn't work anymore. The bar had been raised, not by the Horseman of Might, but by the Horseman of Complexity. Now Magic the Gathering saw this flaw in their game and have corrected it to a point. With the introduction of more abilities, the one power, one toughness needed to be reserved for the creatures with additional effects. Here is Healer's Hawk. Healer's Hawk cost one mana and is a 1-1. One, one. It has flying and lifelink where you can heal your life when your card with lifelink deals damage. Healer's Hawk may not be more powerful than Rustwing Falcon, but its additional effects comes with added utility and also complexity. Over a period of a game's existence, in order to keep it fresh and interesting, the creators will add new assets, mechanics, and features to a game to keep you playing, especially in the format of a trading card game where every new set has to grab your attention in some shape or form. Sometimes this can be done with an aesthetic shift going from classic adventuring and caves and dungeons to dark and spooky haunted forests with bats and werewolves to leaning into engineering potions, Tesla coils and science. But a new aesthetic isn't always enough. Sometimes we want a new ability to make the game we love that little bit more dynamic. And these abilities aren't always more powerful, but they are always adding more complexity to your game by adding variety. More abilities, more variety equals more complexity. Take Hearthstone for example. Hearthstone has the keyword ability charge where you can attack as soon as the minion with charge is played instead of waiting a turn. This has proven to be extremely powerful, resulting in cards with charge receiving nerfs over time. So when Hearthstone released the Witchwood, they introduced Rush, which is an updated form of charge. 
The difference being that a card with Rush cannot attack a hero on the turn they are played. Now we have a nerfed form of an existing effect, but the complexity of the game has increased because the two can exist in the same space unless you plan to rotate one out over time. Now, this example may not sound too bad, but over time, game designers can add layers upon layers of simple mechanics that new players will have to play catch up and learn all the new mechanics before they can start playing said game. Another example of complexity creep is the fear of repeating the same effects. So the newest effect has to have one extra step or requirement to provide a greater reward in order to justify the repetitive nature of trading cards. So we have had the Horseman of Might, the Horseman of Complexity, and now the Horseman of Consistency. This Horseman is the master of repetitive effects found in different cards. If you think of how most TCGs cap copies of cards at 3 to 4 per deck, then by offering pseudo copies with identical or at least very similar effects creates a more consistent gameplay. Which is good, until it goes too far. The whole idea of a TCG is to randomly shuffle your cards and then do your best from what you draw. The increased consistency decreases the randomness of the draw and the similar copies of the cards narrows a player's deck down to one strategic path to victory. So every game will start to feel the same if consistency creep has crept its way into your deck. Now I just want to say that I do love consistency in card games, but in short, too much of a good thing can spoil it. Now our fourth and final horseman of power creep is the horseman of speed. Introducing cards that help you reach your objective faster is always exciting. The ability of skipping a step as if you found some sort of loophole grants you that feeling of superiority. And even Mark Rosewater said, Aim to have your game finish earlier than it feels it should have. Now a game that feels over a turn or two early gives players that urge to play again, as if they need to complete what they started. But with all creeps, the need to push out all the cards to be replaced by newer, more potent cards is upsetting and costly. Adding searching cards that have a similar effect to previous cards or summoning cards that bring out even bigger cards eventually can go too far as well. It's like finding a glitch in a game that skips an entire level is funny, but if every level can do this, then you can complete the game quickly, but at the cost of not actually playing the game itself. And this is the same empty feeling you get when speed creep has crept too far. So if you have a game that plays too quickly, then it feels effortless to reach the end goal. And if your game is too consistent, then you have one path to follow and you don't feel that you have any choices to make and are simply watching the game play out the same way again and again. And if your game is too complex, then it will be lost on players. People will start to make mistakes, backtrack and become frustrated from reading a wall of text three times and still not knowing what the card effect actually does. And if your game constantly increases its raw numbers, leading to old cards becoming blatantly obsolete, then players will learn not to become attached to those cards. They'll learn not to get too close to your game. Because even if they want to love your game, they can't trust it. So that is the four horsemen of power creep. 
I would like to thank Savanis who commented about breaking power creep down into these four categories and ultimately sparked the idea for this video. So thank you, Savanis. And if you think a creep has been missed out today and there could be a potential fifth horseman or power creep, then let me know in the comments section below. And remember, creep is born out of fear of boring the players. So even though we don't always appreciate power creep, it is a necessary evil for us to keep wanting to play these games for years to come. Because all these game companies actually want is to see you happy and excited for you to be playing their games. And of course for you to give them all of your money. So thank you very much, I've been James and I will see you next time for another Talk TCG. Goodbye.